Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We are in the process of solving problems right now, dealing with the notion of subtraction of fractions. Subtraction of fractions. Today is our lesson number 23 and we are on page number 19. Page number 19. Please turn to it. On page number 19, on the very top of the page, you will see sample problems. That's what we're going to do right now. There are 10 of them there. We'll do 5 today. Sample problems. In, the, in addition to these 10 sample problems that you see there, if you feel that you need more practice, if you want to have a little bit more work, uh, more exercises, you can watch these two videos, T is day 4 and basic math, basic math, day number 49, where we solve some more problems dealing with the same concept. T is, the math on the T is and the math on HESI is not, it's not very different, it's very similar. If you want to watch those videos, there are 80 of them, you, you're, you're free to avail yourself to those videos. Day number 4 is where we did the problem dealing with the notion of addition and subtraction of fractions. Let's, let's get going. Number one. Number one is very simple, very straightforward. It's 328 minus 228. Because they have the same denominator as it is, they, they have the common denominator, we don't have to do anything at all. All we have to do is subtract the numerator. 3 minus 2 is 1, so it's just 128. Number two. Number two, we have 28 my over 28 over 37 minus 17 over 37. Again, we, we left out because again we have the same denominator. Denominator is always uh, denominator is already the same. So all we have to do is subtract the subtract the numerators. 28 minus 17. 28 minus 18. 28 minus 18 would have been 10. Therefore, 28 minus 17 would have to be 11. So it's 11 over the common denominator which is 37. Let's do the next one, number 3. Number 3 we have 17 over 25. 17 over 25 minus 3 over 5. 3 over 5. Now here the denominator, the, here the denominators are not the same. Here we have a denominator of 25, here we have a denominator of 5. We, do no, we no longer have the same denominator, we no longer have the common denominator. So we have to make the denominators the same. How can we convert 5 into a 25? It's very simple. Multiply 5 by 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Now if you're going to multiply the bottom by 5, we must, we must multiply the top by 5. Because otherwise, we will change the value of 3 fifths. We cannot change 3 fifths. 3 fifths has to remain 3 fifths because that's what's given in the problem. By multiplying the 3 fifths by 5 over 5, we have not changed its value because 5 over 5 is just 1. If you multiply quantity, any quantity by 1, it doesn't change the value, it's still the same quantity. So here is our second fraction, which is 3 fifths times 5 over 5. Now 5 times 5 is 25, we have 25 here, they have the same common denominator. 17 over 25 minus, let me rewrite it, that did not come out very nice. 17 over 25 minus 3 times 5 which is 15 over 25 and that's just 17 minus 15 which is 2 over 25. 2 over 25. That's it. That's the answer. Let's move on to number 4. Seven, number 4 says 31 over 54 31 over 54 minus 5 over 9. 5 over 9. Again, we have the same problem. The problem being that we do not have the same denominator. Here the denominator is 9. Here the denominator is 54. Before you do any work, before you make it too complicated, before you make it too miserable, ask yourself, what would you get if you divide 54 by 9? Is 54, is, in other words, is 54 a nice multiple of 9? The answer is yes. You must know your tables, as I always remind you, you must know all your tables, 1 through 12, by heart. You have to know your tables, it makes life easier in the exam. If you need help, 
memorizing your table, you can watch the first 12 videos of basic math. Basic math, day 1 through 12, is where we learn our tables. You must know your table of 6. If you know your table of 6s, you will know that 9 6s are 54. How do I know that 9 6s are 54? Because we know that if we have 10 6, 10 6 are 60. 10 times 6 is 60. If 10 6 are 60, instead of 10 6, if we had 9 6, we take away 1 6. 60 minus 6 is 54. So 9 6 are 54. In other words, if you were to multiply this quantity by 6, 9 6 are 54. It's the same denominator as this one now. Since we multiply the top, since we multiply the bottom by 6, we must multiply the top by 6. So that we're multiplying 5 9 by 1. 6 over 6 is just 1. We're done. We have the same denominator now. So it's 31. It's 31. Over 54 minus 5 times 6 is 30 over 54. 31 minus 30 is 1. So the final answer turns out to be 154. Let's do number 5. Let's do number 5. In number 5, we are given. 1 and 9 tenth minus 1 fifth. Now, if you are able to see, if you are able to see right away that 9 tenth, if you are able to see that 9 tenth is more than 1 fifth, then you are home free. How do I know that 9 tenth is more than 1 fifth? Because 1 fifth can be written simply as, if you were to multiply top and bottom by 2, then you will see that 1 fifth is simply 2 tenth. 1 times 2 is 2 is 2 tenth. And of course, 9 tenth, 9 tenth is more than 2 tenth. Since 9 tenth happens to be more than 2 tenth, we can simply subtract these two fractions separately. 9 tenth minus the fifth. 9 tenth minus the fifth, well, fifth is same as 2 tenth, we just found out. So it's just 9 tenth, it just happens to be 9 tenth minus 2 tenth. 9 tenth minus 2 tenth is just going to be 7 tenth. So now we know that 9 tenth, 9 tenth minus the fifth is 7 tenth. And that one is still there. So the final answer happens to be the one that was here. We have not done anything with that one. That one is still there, right here. That comes here. One. And then 9 tenth minus the fifth, which is right here. Fifth is same as 2 tenth. And we just found out that 9 tenth minus the fifth, which is same as 2 tenth. 9 tenth minus 2 tenth is 7 tenth. So the final answer is 1 and 7 tenth. 1 and 7 tenth. Let's do number six. Let's do number six. In number six, we have fifteen and seven eighth. Sorry, the seven eighteenth minus three ninth minus three ninth. Well, the easiest, the simplest, the fastest way to tackle this thing is to convert this into an 18. We have an 18 here at the bottom. We, if we can convert this into an 18, then we can see whether this quantity is less than or more than that quantity. How can we convert 9 into an 18? By multiplying top and bottom by 2. So what do we end up here? What we end up here is this. What we end up here is 15 and 7 18 which is given to us here, we simply have this here, minus 3 times 2, which is 6 18th. 6 18th. Now we have the same denominator, and we are able to see immediately, we are able to see immediately that 7, 7 18th minus 6 18th, 7 18 minus 6 18th is just 1 18th. So the final answer is going to be the 15, because we have not done anything with the 15, final answer is just going to be 15, and then 7, 7 18th minus 6 18th is just 1 18th. Voila. Because that 15, we never used anything with it. That 15 was 15 to begin with right here. We brought it down and we finally bring it down one more time. And what we find is that this quantity, 7 18th minus 3 9th, is simply 1 18th. See you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.